Hi, Dave Wilson here again and today we're going to be looking at the Durston 10 piece disc cutter. So come with me, let's take a close look at it. So here we are, this is the Durston 10 piece disc cutter set and you can see it comes in this lovely carry case which is very sturdy. It comes with 10 disc cutters ranging from a large one at the back here to some very small ones at the front. It's got 10 holes in the cutter itself and it also comes with an allen key. Um, for some bizarre reason they didn't make a hole to put the allen key in. I don't know why but there we go. So I'm going to take this out and we're going to cut some uh, sheet with it and I'll show you how to use it and give you some ideas. Okay. Now when you first receive your disc cutter uh, you'll probably find that it's coated in quite a thick layer of grease obviously to stop it rusting in transit so you might want to wipe it down but you don't need to wipe inside the holes leave the grease in there because that'll help to lubricate your pieces when you're using it so this is the disc it's very solid very heavy uh, you've got three pins which keep it all aligned and in the middle here you've got the large screw which you unscrew with the allen key so the first thing you'll need to do is unscrew it now I've chosen the largest punch here which fits in the big hole and a couple of things you'll notice is it's got a polished side and it's got a black side now the black side is the side that you hit the polished side that is the cutting surface and if you look at it you might notice that it's slightly at an angle so it cuts at one side first and then cuts all the way around to the other side so, something else that you need to consider is you need to think about the surface that you're actually cutting onto. You see, the cutters go all the way through and they will strike the surface that is underneath. So, you don't want to be cutting holes out of your workbench, but vice versa. If you put this onto a metal block or an anvil, you are going to be striking your cutter into the metal, so that's going to damage it. So go with, um, I've got a nice block of wood here, this is a tree stump, a nice block of wood, uh, a piece on your bench perhaps, or maybe even uh, a nylon or plastic cutting board. But you want to watch what you're cutting it into. Something else that's very important is your hammer. Now when you're striking the top of your punches, you need to make sure that you're not using a heavy steel hammer because that could damage the top. So what I'm using here is a two pound brass head mallet or brass head hammer. This is nice and heavy, it gives you all the weight you need to strike the punches but because it's brass it's not going to damage them. Now I'm using here a little piece of copper sheet. This is 0.5 millimeter copper sheet. Now According to Durston, you can use anything up to one millimeter in this unit, but they don't specify one millimeter what. Obviously, aluminium is a lot softer, copper, silver, gold, uh, easy. But if you're using one millimeter sheet steel or stainless steel, for example, that's going to be a lot tougher. So do use that as a guideline, but obviously think about it sensibly. So. 0.5 mil copper, so I'm going to use the big hole, so I'm going to line it up and again try to be economical, so try to cut near the edges and you'll get more shapes out. Now, what I'm doing here is this is just a little off cut of the same material and I'm going to pop this in the other side and what that does is that just helps to keep that top plate balanced and nice and level. It, it's not a necessity, but it's always good practice with these screw down times. So that just helps to keep it nice and level. So, tighten it up, finger tight first, and then just a little bit, just a fraction of a turn. And all you're doing is you're just securing your metal there. Now, like I said, this is quite greasy at the moment because this is relatively new, but even so, you want to put some lubricant around the tip. 
So I'm using some cut lube here. You could use burr life, beeswax, just a little bit of oil, a little bit of grease. Doesn't really matter what. It's just something to act as a lubricant and it stops it from sticking as it goes through the metal. So there we go. Again, nice solid surface. This is going onto wood. Two pound brass hammer. And here we go. There we go. Four blows. Not too hard. And there you can see the finished disc. All this is just grease that's come out of the unit. Um, don't worry about that, that'll clean up. But you can see the edges are nice and smooth and they need very, very little finishing just literally just run round with some sandpaper or indeed just pop them into the tumbler. So let's cut out a couple more. Nice and steady and what you want is several good sharp heavy blows. You're not tickling it here you need to force it through. So give it a whack. There we go that was kind of three taps really. The fourth one knocked it through and there we go nice little beautiful copper disc. Now I've just cut out a range of discs here uh, we've got the larger ones and I've also cut out a few of these tiny ones and this one here I don't know whether you can even see it on the camera um, this is done with the, the smallest punch there. Now don't forget it's not just about the thing that you cut out, the disc that you cut out the hole itself can actually be a decorative feature so here for example I've used some, some of the three smaller ones and I've cut some holes in here so the holes itself become part of the design. So don't just think about the disc, think about the hole. Um, just a little piece of advice with this smaller punch. This, this is the smallest one, I think this is 3mm. This is slightly different to all the others in that it's all one piece. It doesn't have the black and the shiny ends. So do check, there's a rounded end and there's a square end. The square end is the cutting face, so make sure you have it the right way around. Also, because this is so small, you need to make sure you lubricate it, otherwise it will get stuck. OK, just a couple of quick ideas here. This is the large 32mm disc, and on this one I've used a smaller punch to punch some holes in it. Uh, I might drill a few holes in it as well, smaller ones, and I'm going to dome it and polish it. So I'll show you that in a minute. Now, here, I've printed out some designs on the computer, and I've shrunk them to 32mm. So, print them out, use a prick stick, and stick them onto the back of the copper disc. So I can use that as a pattern now, so I'll drill that, and cut that out with a piercing saw, dome it, and I'll have a beautiful pendant. So I'll show you that in a moment as well. Well I hope that's given you a little bit of an insight into what you can do with the disc cutter. If you're certainly in the market for one then this is certainly one of the best. Uh, British made, British quality, look after it, it'll last you a lifetime. So I've been Dave Wilson, thanks for watching, see you next time.